Hello and welcome to Vesper HBT. My name is Max and I'm a key designer in the software that you're about to see. Sound concepts with products to reduce your demands on the power grid. Move into a greener tomorrow. Welcome to the future today. All the information within this video can be seen on the TEEP forum. And that's TEEP, T E E P, dot forum, co, dot com. And here it is, the Electromagnetic Bifilier Coil Calculator. It's been designed by Max and Richard. All rights are reserved, and it's a copyrighted bit of software. As you can see, our drive coil data is very simple. We have a drawing here to illustrate which measurements are for which parts of your coil, which is very simple to follow. We have our core diameter, we have our outer diameter, and we have our coil length. We also have our conversion section, which converts fractions, metric to inch, and wire gauge. To create a fraction conversion, simply input the top measurement, which let's say that we're going to change our core diameter to a half inch. We would simply change that to a 1, and our bottom to a 2 for the half inch conversion, and hit enter. You'll notice that our decimal conversion is a 0.5 so we know to change our core diameter to a point 0.5. You'll notice that our outer diameter is a point 0.72. We're going to change that to a 1.5, which is a standard Bedini outside. And our core length, we'll go ahead and leave at 2 inches. You'll also notice that we can convert our wire sizes. So if you have an SWG of a 22, you're going to change that to an AWG of a 21. That's going to be inputted into our wire data section. You'll notice that you can in input that information in any green square. All of those are the manual inputs that you can input to change the calculations to better fit your coil design. So let's change that to a 22. You'll notice a couple of things. Our trigger coil is automatically designed to update to the size of your run wire. If you look here on our side, you'll notice two drawings. One is the design of a coil that has been cut completely in half to show you what that would look like. As these are bifilier coils, you have a drive coil wire and you have a run coil wire. And the run is green and the trigger is red. And you'll notice that the trigger wire fits within the groove of our drive wire. The reason for that is to cut down on lens effect and, all, and also induce a greater flux rating within the coil. You'll notice that we have a couple of different things. You'll notice that we have our SWG wire gauge, and you'll notice that we have our trigger wire data as well. So you'll be able to cross-reference. The coiling data is very simple. You have your layers, and you have your turns. On the top, we have our turns, and on the bottom, we have our layers for our drive and our trigger. You'll notice here that it tells us the actual turns and layers and then you can see how that would affect in our illustration on to the, to the right. You'll notice that you can set your turns for how many you want on your coil. A standard Benini coil is 12 volts, which would be a standard 100 turns per volt, which would equal 1200 turns. You'll notice off to the right hand side that we have a max turn rating, and I'll show you more about that in just a minute. The length of our wire is def definitely important and that shows how much wire we're going to need to purchase to make the said coil. We have our length in meters as well as feet. The pounds of wire is also very important and this is for the structural integrity of your motor. Because we're dealing with definite forces that pull and push against our materials, we want to make sure that the weights of our materials do not exceed the structural integrity of our motor thus causing massive failures and causing personal injury. So make sure that you take that into mind, which is the pounds that your coil is actually going to weigh, times the amount of coils, and also the amount of pressures that are exerted upon your materials. The resistance of our coil is very important. And the reason why this is important is after you have made your coil, you want to check the ohms reading to make sure that you don't have shorts or crosses. Now, you'll have a 0.5 variance, and that's due to the different types of meters and the different wires from around the world. You'll notice that we have a measurement for our drive, 
as well as our trigger. You will see that we can change the applied voltage to the coil. Say for this coil we want to use 12 volts, but maybe we have a 24 volt coil or a 46 volt coil. You can change your input voltage. The rated current is very important. This is the amount of current that you are going to provide to your coil to induce the GOSS readings that will affect the push and pull of your actual coil. You'll notice that I have this set at 300 milliamps. Now if I change this to 500 milliamps, you'll notice that this will change a great deal. Now, as you can see with our air coil readings, we have a drive which is 15 and our trigger which is 15. A standard iron core is 61.6 and a high density Vesper core is 92.4. You'll notice that there are several different dimensions that can be changed. Once we change our input amperage to say 150 milliamps, you will notice that our Gauss ratings have changed dramatically. By cutting the amount of amperage that you put in changes the flux rating of your coil which changes the Gauss rating of your coil in a great degree. I generally tend to drive my coils at around 300 milliamps all the way down to 64 milliamps depending upon the Gauss readings and what I would like to do with the actual coil and how efficient I would like it to run. Now if you would like to increase your Gauss ratings but you don't want to increase your power and you don't want to increase your amperage you can still increase your Gauss ratings. You can increase that by increasing the differences in the types of core that you're using. You can also use our max turns area. Our max turns area tells you at the size that you have said that your coil is going to be or your bobbin size, there will be enough space to fit 1,413 wrappings on your coil. So if we maximize our actual benefit of our coil size and we change nothing else, you will notice that our Gauss readings have increased. Our drive is now 18, trigger is 18 on an air core, our standard iron core is 71.5, and our high density Vesper core is 107.2. Now let's get up here and check out some other maximizations that we can do. Let's say we want to leave this at, 200, at 1200 windings. Because we're okay with the amount of Gauss rating that we have, because that's going to be enough Gauss to repel our magnets. If you come up you can see our optimized coil dimension has set a couple of measurements here for our reference. These will tell us the minimum size that our spool can be to still accept 100 to the 1200 turns. If you change one measurement it will automatically update so maybe you can only have a coil that is a half inch core and only two inches long but we want to be able to reduce the overall size. So we can change this to a 1.35 and you'll notice a couple of things that change. Our coil length is perfectly fine at 2 inches because we've optimized that and our outer diameter we've changed and we've optimized our outer diameter because we could get a lot larger. Now let's say that we couldn't get any larger than the 1.5 but we can extend our length or maybe our length is too long and we'll change that to 1.70 so we've decreased our length of our coil and now it's been optimized once again. So I wanted to take this time to show you briefly on how to use our coil calculator. It will be updated on a website very very soon. And again thank you very much for joining us on Vesper HPT's coil calculator and I hope that you'll take advantage of this once we update it and show it on a website. All of our updates will be again on theteepforum.com. Thank you and have a great day.